Yes? Come on then. Come on, in you come. It doesn't matter whenever I start filming, whenever I pick up my camera, without fail, Lumi decides it's her time to talk. Don't you? Here in the UK, we're just about to head into a bank holiday weekend, which I'm very much looking forward to because I've got lots planned. I'm going to be heading down to the Cotswolds with Lids for a good old hike. I'm also going to be playing golf with my dad and brother for his birthday, which I'm looking forward to actually. I've been getting out a lot more recently. It's great for getting your steps in and also slowly but surely, my game is improving. Very slowly, I must add. There's also a nice little surprise uh, over the weekend as well, which I'm uh, bringing you guys along with. But before we get on with the day, today we're gonna to be going out shooting for my Teresa, who I'm partnering with in today's video. I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes and showing you a new creative that was inspired from a tutorial that I came across online. I'll link that in the description box below actually, because I thought it was very, very cool. So we're gonna be doing a take on that. But before we do head out, I wanted to talk to you about some of the pieces that I've selected and purchased myself as well, I must add, online at my Teresa. And this is all because I'm trying to find some new statement pieces that provide longevity. And that's something that I'm trying to be a lot more conscious of. I want to make sure that I'm investing in my wardrobe even more so than ever before. And by doing that, I've taken some pieces that I've accumulated over the years, items that I repurchase, that I know I get loads of wear out of, um, just some classic timeless items. And I'm gonna put some money into those items and make sure that I get some good quality wear. And it's such a rewarding process because not only am I getting an item that I know I'm gonna love because I'm already wearing similar items in my wardrobe, I'm getting a much higher quality product, which means that it makes me feel great wearing it. And it comes with much more compliments as well when you're wearing these items. So it's a win-win-win all around. A subject that I just wanted to quickly touch on, which is so important and somewhat overlooked in many cases in men's fashion, is tailoring. Many of you gents that go and wear suits, uh, you'll be very familiar with the process of going to a tailor and having your suits fitted. And it's very important because there's no such thing as one fit suits all, promote your own personal style and your tailor can help you achieve this. So I quite like to have a tapered leg. I know that there are new trends at the moment where a lot of the guys are wearing a much wider leg and previously and uh, still currently in some cases a very skinny fit on the leg as well. So whatever your desires are, a tailor can help you achieve those. And so some of the items that I selected on my Teresa actually come with a raw cuff. So the trouser leg was left long and not finished because the intent is that you would then go and have your trousers tailored to make sure that they fit exactly how you want them to be. And when you're investing in your items and these products are gonna last, you do want to make sure that the fit is spot on. So I headed into Milton Keynes and I took some trousers in and I just wanted to quickly show you the before and after and how beneficial it is to have your items tailored. So here's a quick look at the trousers before and the trousers after I had them tailored. So as you can see, a very lovely double-breasted jacket. This is from a Belgian designer called Dries van Norten. He comes from the third generation of tailors and he's been known to dress actors for the Oscars. When I featured this on my Instagram a month or so ago, I got lots and lots of messages about how incredible this designer is and how proud they were to see him doing so well. And there's actually a quote on the website that says, this is the perfect jacket for men looking for a distinctive look and I could not agree more. I think it's fair to say this is the best fitted jacket that I've ever purchased. The quality of it just feels amazing. It's 100% wool. I think I'll stick it on because you'll see when I wear it how the silhouette of this jacket is just so complimentary. Certainly in the style that I like to wear my clothes anyway. So I'll quickly pop this on. I did take this jacket down to the tailors. I didn't really need anything done to it other than the sleeves were just pulled up slightly on the cuff uh, just to make sure that it fitted correctly on the length. Lydia always tells me how important it is to invest in a statement jacket 
Uh, she's a big fan of the Balmain jackets and I've actually had my eye on getting one for a very long time and I hadn't come across anything. So I was browsing on my Teresa and I saw this and I was like, this jacket is exactly what it is I'm looking for. So as you can see, it's got a nice fit. Something that I was told when having your jackets and stuff tailored is if you actually create 90 degree bend with your fingers on your hands, when you rest your arms down by the side, you should actually have the base of your jacket just sit perfectly into this cup, as you can see. That's a great way of making sure that you've got the right length jacket. But as you can see, it's a lovely double-breasted jacket with some statement buttons. I'm going to turn around, you can see the back of it. The silhouette hugs really nicely into my waistline. This is the kind of jacket that you can wear throughout the whole year, even in the summer evenings when it gets a little bit chillier. You could chuck this on and it's going to be a fantastic addition to my autumn winter wardrobe. I would definitely say this is a jacket for those smarter occasions. If I'm going to a lovely restaurant with lids, I'd definitely chuck this on. It's going to be one of those go-to items and uh, I'm very happy to add this to my wardrobe. Next up, we're going to be talking knitwear. Now, this is a fundamental for any gent's wardrobe, in my opinion. These shirts are very diverse and it's going to make for a very transitional piece as we come into autumn, winter. This item is from a company called John Smedley. Many of you may be familiar with them. They're made in England and I'm actually a little bit digging around. And this company was founded around the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. That's over 200 years ago. It's, it's crazy. This company is known as being one of the world's finest knitwear companies and the jumper itself is made from 100% merino wool and you know about it. It is so comfortable, literally fits like a glove. Really happy with this item. I found that I generally warm towards stone and beige jumpers. They look really crisp over a white shirt. I put it on a white hanger just to give you a little bit of a visual there. They just help make that shirt pop. You can also wear them on their own. They look really smart, just tucked into a pair of trousers. It's an item that I purchased a few times before from various different places. So I thought it was time to invest in a really good quality piece of knitwear. This certainly will not be the last one. I'm very impressed with this and it definitely epitomizes that high quality that I'm looking for. So next up, I've got a pair of trousers from Lardini. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm not sure. They're an Italian-based company founded in the 70s. And this is my first ever purchase of a pair of double pleated trousers. It's very 1940s inspired, I think. I've seen a lot of guys wearing this in the tailoring world. They look really, really smart on. And I really, really love how this small button flap on the top of the pleat adds some nice detail to the trousers themselves. As I mentioned a second ago, these were the trousers that came with a rough cuff for the intention of tailoring. And if you were to look for that 1940s style, you definitely would go with a wider leg, as I said. But I went for a slightly more tapered leg just because I felt that that spoke with my personal style. These trousers are made of a blend of materials that create this final fabric. They've got a nice stretch finish to them, uh, which means that they're going to be super comfortable. I'd probably style these up with both smart shoes as well as boots by having them cut at this length, meaning that I can wear them with both shoes, boots. I'm trying to find that middle ground where the length sits really nicely and it can accommodate all different styles of dressing. That way I'm gonna get more out of these. Now, whilst we're talking to trial coil trousers, you may think I'm crazy, but what I'm wearing here right now are some more Dries Van Norton trousers. These are a more classic standard fit. As you can see, there's no pleats and these are made of a herringbone texture. The weight and the quality of these trousers, I just cannot explain to you, they feel amazing. They're extremely comfortable, and if I turn around, you'll see that they've got some lovely detailed features around the belt area. And I think it's just those nice little subtle touches that just make such a big difference when you have quite a classic and minimal style like I do. So. Yeah, these are another item that I picked up online. Again, the reason being for these trousers is because I found through trial and error that dark gray trousers work really well with my current wardrobe palette. And it, again, it just means that I'm gonna get more wear out of my items. Now, last but not least, we're going to footwear. Todd's, a company that I'm sure that absolutely everybody watching this video will be familiar with. Very famous for their driving shoes. These are a pair of rich suede loafers. I've been after a pair of Todd's for a very long time. If any of you have followed me and Lydia for a while, you know that Lydia is a huge fan of Todd's and she's constantly telling me to buy some. So I finally purchased my first pair. These in fact would look absolutely lovely 
with some charcoal trousers. They also work really well throughout the summer months and they'll carry me through autumn as well. One thing that I would say when you're wearing suede in the winter, I do it all year round. Just make sure you get some protect on them just to make sure that you protect the suede in certain weather conditions. The quality of these shoes speak for themselves. Company have got a huge heritage and you can just tell the sturdiness They've got a really nice weighty feel to them, rubber sole, strong tread on the toe. If I'm looking to go somewhere where I want to be super smart, I'd definitely put these on. So if you are in the market for a pair of loafers, I would look no further than a pair of Todd's and also Church's, I would highly recommend. They're definitely pieces that are worth investing in because they are quality shoemakers. Some people like to wear these as suits, some people say it's controversial. I'm a fan of it, I think they can look really smart, especially if you're going to wear a slightly higher crop on your leg, I think loafers work well. And you are traditionally supposed to wear these with socks, but I have no preference. I say that they look great with and great without. So it's whatever floats your boat. These make the perfect replacement for any formal shoe in your wardrobe. So that wraps up a quick overview of my recent pickups from my Teresa. As you can see, very sort of like neutral toned color palette going on there. I do that on purpose because it very much reflects in my style. And that goes back to that very repeated point that I keep on making, that the more wearable your items are, the more use you're gonna get out of them. As always, I'll leave a link down to all of these items in the description box below. I'll also leave a couple of links to some of the other recent items that I've picked up from my Teresa, including like the linen shirts and some of the other items that you would have seen featured on my Instagram. We're gonna get ready now to head out and shoot some creative stuff. Hopefully these images come out nicely I've never done this before, so let's kind of see what we can do. As you can probably hear, we have a little bit of drizzle above and it doesn't look like it's going to clear up. Luckily, I put my suede protect on my loafers, so they are protected as best as they can be. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for the heavier stuff to slow down a little bit, which we're hoping it will do. Have a little shoot. Hopefully we'll get what we need and we won't get too wet, but judging by, you can probably see on my shoulders, literally stood outside the car for a moment and just got pain. So I feel a very dancing in the rain inspired shoot going down. I've brought an umbrella with me and that could save me from looking like a complete drowned rat in a second. So yeah, we're gonna jump outside now. Might be a little bit hard to put you guys on a time lapse. I'll do my best, I'll see what I can do. Might leave you in the car, but unfortunately this camera is not waterproof. So I can't leave you out on a tripod in the rain because I might lose my camera doing that. So yeah, we'll see. See how we go. Just had a little brainwave. There is a car park that is completely empty, which obviously means that we're undercover. So I thought it's the perfect location to have a go at doing this creative shoot. Stay dry at the same time. So it's kind of all working in our favor. You can see behind me, we've got a location on our hands. Our props today are an umbrella, which was, as I explained earlier, brought out because it is actually raining today. And I've also got this brown leather zip bag. Now, this is just to add a little bit of color into my outfit. So when I do this pixel stretch, it stretches out a little bit of color and it's not too bland. So behind me here is the location I'm gonna be shooting today. And that isn't so important right now because it's basically all gonna be stretched out and blurred. So you're not really gonna see it. Uh, but it's just here to add a little bit of detail into the photo. In this next photo, we're gonna be taking it in front of the plain white wall. That's because the background's gonna stay pretty neutral as it is, and I'm gonna be dragging out the outfit as opposed to the background in the previous image. So it's very much taken from the same creative vision, but it's just a different way of shooting it.
I have finished off shooting. That was a really successful shoot. I'm actually very excited to see how those edits come out. One of the locations and one of the shots that we did was super cool. So hopefully they'll come out very well, but I've put my mask on because I'm just about to head into a M&S store to grab some onions, olive oil, and some butter. Something along those lines anyway, because Lily's gonna be making us a risotto this evening. I'm gonna jump inside now, grab that, and then head home and we are done for the day. It's nearly seven o'clock. afternoon today is the start of our bank holiday weekend officially kids and i settled down with carrie and chris and we had a really nice evening we got a takeaway actually and just sat around having a good old chat and a few glasses of champagne and then this morning we've just had a really leisurely start to the day but i had to let lydia know that i have a little surprise in store for her she doesn't really know anything about it i just told her that we have a couple of people visiting the house because i've arranged a surprise for her this evening just to make sure that she's ready and prepared for people to arrive at the house but that's all she knows at the moment but i thought i'd quickly touch base with you guys uh, so basically what's happened is a company that specialize in bespoke events reached out to me and offered me a press event where they can come to the house so i had a couple of conversations about some of lydia's favorite things and they've included that in a brief to put together the perfect setup for lids so I haven't seen it yet myself. We're all gonna be experiencing seeing this together for the first time. But I thought it was a really nice way to acknowledge Lydia's hard work this year. And I just wanted to let her know how proud I was of all of her achievements. And uh, so it's just a nice little gesture, a nice little surprise. It's something you can do for your partner just to give a little bit of acknowledgement because I think it's really common in everyday life that our partners and our friends, they have these small wins and sometimes they kind of get overlooked or they're not escalated and celebrated as much as they possibly should be. And so I just wanted to do something that was a little bit larger than normal just to really show and uh, share my acknowledgement of that. So when they reached out, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity just to acknowledge that and make it about lids and for lids as well. So when the team arrive, of course, I'll document the setup. Over the last couple of days, we have experienced a little bit of rain. So initially we were gonna situate it in the woodlands and we were gonna put the campfire on. But I think because of that, we may resituate it onto the courtyard driveway. I'm gonna take the advice of the professionals. When they arrive, they can let me know what they think's best. And yeah, we'll see how we go. So they should be here literally any moment now. So I'm gonna go downstairs and get prepared. Guys are busy outside building the set. Lids and I have just decided to have yesterday's takeaway. These are the leftovers. It's, um, what did you say this was called? Let me get the proper name. Okay, it's from Ragamama, and it's a very succulent chicken and rice dish. We'll find out what it's called. It smells divine. What you want, just eat? Yeah, yeah, just to get the, the name of it, it would be on our last order. Yeah, brown down chicken. Nice. I accidentally ordered two portions. Which is why we've got leftover. Which is why we've got Which is a result, now we're having yeah. it for lunch. <laughs> no peeking outside, I'm all not, right? I'm not, I'm not being. Very yummy. Spinach doing quite well. It took yeah. a bit of a battering in the storm. Yeah, it did. Lettuce. <laughs> Lettuce. <laughs> okay. And then we've got a new courgette at the rear. Yeah. Spring onions, got some heads on them. The carrots are looking good. Mm. Carrie's mum propagated some foxgloves, fox which I absolutely love. Which we do know are not good for cats, but Lumi stays away from plants, so it's fine. Oh, I didn't know that. All, basically all plants and flowers are not great for animals. Oh, right, okay. So we're gonna go over to the wild flower section. Oh, I wanted to see this as well. Because, uh, yeah, well, hang on. Many of you will remember that I dug this out I think I vlogged it, and if I didn't, I dug out this whole section of the garden, created a little bit of a bed, seeded it with some wildflower from a box, and we're looking quite good. I'm growing well. We've blossomed a little bit there, Looking one down there. The white ones here. Yeah, so hopefully we're gonna have a nice. We've got a dandy. Um, it's all gonna cover up this manhole cover. We've got a dandelion coming up there. 
That'd be dandy. <laughs> and then you want to chuck a couple of fox gloves in, mm. in the mix. We've planted quite a few along this back side because there wasn't as much wildflower over here. So I thought I'd chuck a lot in down this end and hopefully that can reseed in the future. We start getting some growth and then over there. And then we're just going to chuck a couple along the front of the bed. And then that way there's a little bit of formation. It kind of like slowly leads to a collection of them. So hopefully they'll go quite nice. They can go quite tall, so it should be good. Look at Lydia looking very country. <laughs> Is it Dewberry or Dewberry? It's Dewberry. I just always say Dewberry. Because my dad used to say, like, something, he had a saying with Dewberries. It'd be like, like, you know, people call like a what's it, a Dewberry. Pass me that Dewberry. A didgeridoo, you mean? No. A, a remote? No, 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 no. Like it, I, can't, I remember that that's what he used, to, he used to use it as a... How many other people's parents used to go, where's that didgeridoo? Or pass the didgeridoo? No. It's just me. My dad would say, like, where's the jelly box? Oh, the jelly. <laughs> I've sent Lydia up into my office so she can stay out of the way and keep her beak out of all the business going on downstairs. <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing some gardening. You are. You're ready, you look like you're ready to do oh, I did. some I gardening. I did. I planted my courgette. Oh, good. And I've relabeled all of my herb stuff with the slates that Charlie and Josie got me. Good. And I was going to um, repot my... Provence time. Mm -hmm. You've been kicked out. I've been kicked out. I thought the only place I can't see anything is up here. Yeah. So I can just. Good. You chill up here. Good girl. So despite our best efforts to remain positive, great British weather has got the better of us and we've decided that today just isn't the right day to be hosting an outside event. It's super drizzly. It's not like pouring it down, but it's pretty windy. So myself and the team, we've had a little chat and there was an option to come inside and actually set up the external setup in the house because they said it still looks absolutely amazing. We all had our hearts set on having everything done outside and so I would love to experience it in that way and I think that Lydia will enjoy it as well. So what we've done is come to the decision that we're going to reschedule for another weekend when the weather's looking a lot more promising. Fingers crossed I will be able to put this on four lids but I'm not going to let that dampen tonight's spirits. It's still going to be a chance for me to let Lydia know how amazing she is. I'm going to put on the fire, I'm going to lay a nice cheese spread out, probably going to drink some champagne as well. So the plan is to revert back to what I do best, um, which is a nice cozy evening in uh, with a cheese board. And that will be the fallback plan for today. So I'm just gonna uh, get busy doing that now, but before I do, I better light the fire and get that room warming up. And by the way, a lot of you will know for a very long time, I've been after one of these lighters Oh yes, I found one, and I'm a happy boy. <laughs> you right there? Yeah. Are you sucking your thumb? No, I was... Biting your nail? Mm. Equally just... as bad. I wasn't biting it, I just had it rested between my teeth. Oh. Like that. You look very cosy. I am cosy. Even cosier now that's on. Yeah, it's cold in here because the doors were open. Yes, well, they were. I am gonna have a quick change of clothes and then I'm gonna get settled down for the evening as well. I'm gonna be putting on a little spread for the lounge. Two boards. One board I'm gonna put some toast on for some balsamic vinegar and oil. This board I'm gonna put a selection of cheeses, meat and tomatoes. We're just 
just waiting for this stuff in the oven. But I have a little cheese board here with a selection of dominantly cheddars. And then I've got some little picky bits over here, gherkins, tomatoes, hummus, sauce. Uh, we're gonna finish off the VC rosé from last night. And I'm gonna chuck in a raspberry into the champagne glasses. Very important, stay hydrated. Balsamic vinegar and oil. The toast is in the toaster ready to come out. And then very soon, chips, sausage rolls will be ready. Five minutes. Looking good? You hungry? I'm very hungry. There's a pussy cat behind you that also looks very hungry. You hungry, Lumi? You hungry, Bobby? You want some food? Yeah. It's a good job I brought you out some food then, isn't it? You've got to eat these too. Yeah, I never forget about you. Good girl. She's spoiled rotten. She is so spoiled. So anyway, like there's the spread. We are ready to have a little feast and then we're going to put on the telly box. I'll yeah. probably read my book, but you'll put yeah. the telly box. Sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Champagne spray in the living room. And it's getting late. I want you to stay. There was one thing that my neighbour told me once. A good hostess always has sausage rolls in her freezer. Mm -hmm. And so we've never been without since. Mm -hmm. Good tip. Mm. I do love champagne. Mm -hmm. I went off it for a while, but now I just. It's, nice, it? it's so lovely. Whenever your parents come around and we have champagne, Maybe I'm it's like off. a seasonal thing back in the winter. Mm. Look at that. Well, all good. Anyway, cheers to you. This is my favourite thing. Anything mm. more than this is wonderful. I just knew. That if outside had happened, she would have sat out there with us. So it's Sunday morning, golf day. My dad's just arrived outside. This morning I've done an ab circuit, had my breakfast and ready for the day ahead. So we're gonna be going and grabbing some lunch actually after we pick up my little brother for his birthday. And then we're gonna be going to play golf. We're gonna get 18 holes in. My dad and my brother are much better golfers than I am. So I'm tearing myself up for failure, excuse the pun. But they say it's the taking part that counts. That is a losing mentality guys, but uh, it should be a good day. The weather's looking great. so. Hopefully the rain holds off. I don't even know if it's predicted to rain. And uh, wish me luck, because I'm probably just about to go and get schooled. Please remain in your car until five minutes from tea time. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a wave then. Huh? Your birthday boy teeing up first. In his friction. Decided to go for an iron, have you? Playing it safe. Because. Is it 380? Good look. We've got the car park right on the left side. We don't want to be hitting any cars. Looking nice. Yep. Looks like you're on the green. This one's from. Yep. Lovely. Seven iron I should have hit. I hit an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Got that on film, you lucky bugger. So we're about 160 yards to the pin. Downhill. Downhill. Flash Gordon. Sponsored by Shrikshan. He's stepping up to the plate. He's got his lovely new Adidas on. You're right, you're right. I didn't see it bounce down, did you? Uh, I think it came down to beyond the tree. Okay. The pressure of the video. It was. Let's see what Grandpa can do. It's <laughs> oh. caught the ground a bit. How horrible. I know where I get it from, chaps. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <it's record. laughs> Any opportunity to ring the bell, the big kid. <laughs> so we've really lucked out with the weather. 
beautiful sunny day. Currently on the 10th. Birthday boys down the hill in the ferns. Horrible shot. He's got to stab that out. Oh, he's done it. He's got her up. From that position, mate, you'd take that. We're on the last day of the bank holiday weekend and we're going to be finishing it off with a good old hike around the British countryside. We're going to be heading down to the Cotswolds. What a surprise! Who would have thought it? Pull out my camera and you appear. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to be heading down to uh, have a good old hike around the Cotswolds. We're going to grab some nice food, maybe a pub lunch or something along those lines anyway. Lydia's downstairs just getting the last little bits together, some snacks, make sure we've got some water for the road and then we're going to head off. Would you like some food? That's a no. In true Lydia style, she's decided to take a little pit stop at a garden centre, so I'm going to use this as an opportunity to post today's blog post, which if any of you want to head over to addygordon.net, you'll be able to catch up on all of my latest posts. I've managed to stay very consistent and post every Monday uh, over the last couple of months. So if you've not been over there for a while, there's going to be lots of new content, but lots of different topics from Netflix recommendations to fashion. There's also some motivational bits on there as well. So if you want to head over allygordon.net, it'd be greatly appreciated. And uh, I'm now going to jump into the driving seat and I'm going to be the person that drives us down to the Cotswolds. We had a good old hike around the Cotswolds and we finished the evening off having a couple of drinks at a restaurant. I personally wasn't drinking obviously because I was driving, but the girls had a drink and yeah, it was just really nice. It was good to get out and about. It's actually 12.30, so technically it's Tuesday right now. I have a very busy day tomorrow, so I'm gonna be filling it in the morning. But when we were driving back this evening, we saw the first of the fog of like this part of the year so signs of we're coming closer to the autumn months just saying and uh, there was also frost as well on some of the grass verges so yeah it's definitely dropped a little bit getting a bit nippier but anyway it's very very late i thought this would be a great time to end the vlog uh, because tomorrow we'll have to start a new one. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, anything that's relevant, I'll leave links to those in the description box below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.